Hello friends of Great Saints, welcome to this channel and today we're going to be having a look at another dream of Saint John Bosco. Remember these were prophetic dreams and they were highly symbolic and this one is called Saint John Bosco on the highway to hell as I call it. So Saint John Bosco had had several of these dreams in a row now for several nights they left him absolutely exhausted and so on this particular occasion he was trying to avoid having another dream. He had stayed up until midnight reading and I propped himself up in bed and he was determined not to go to sleep. But he was exhausted and so sleep soon came over him. And in this dream, the very vivid dream, um, his guide once again appeared. Who was his guide? We're not sure. It could have been St. Francis de Sales, it could have been a, a holy angel, it could have been one of the other saints. But these, the guide frequently appeared and took him through the whole dream, pointing out certain things. And the guide said to him, get up and follow me. And St. John Bosco, exhausted, said, for heaven's sake, just leave me alone. I'm absolutely exhausted and fatigued. But shortly after that, they were heading out again, crossing a vast, boundless plain. It was a lifeless desert, St. John, John Bosco says. Even the plants were shriveled and yellow. And then, now they come to the point where they reach this road to hell. And so suddenly ahead of him, he saw this road. St. John Bosco asked, where to now? And they took the road. It was a beautiful road, he said. It was wide, it was neatly paved. And then what came to mind was, the way of sinners is smooth. Smooth stones and at their end are hell and darkness and pain. It's from the Bible. Both sides of this road were lined with these magnificent verdant hedges dotted with gorgeous flowers all around. It was so appealing. There were roses especially peeping through everywhere through the leaves. And at first glance, the road was absolutely level and smooth and looked completely harmless. And so they ventured upon the road without even the least suspicion. And then he noticed that there was this insensible incline. The road kept on inclining slightly. It did not look steep at first. And he found himself moving absolutely effortlessly along the road as if he was just gliding through the air, hardly even moving his feet, he said. And then it struck me, but how hard it is going to be to return along this road. So what springs to mind here are our Lord's words. Wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction and many enter through it. But they kept going along the road and it kept sloping ever more slightly downwards. And they will continue to be flanked by these um, the wonderful flowers and hedges on either side. And then he became aware of some of the oratory boys who were now around him on the same road. They were following him. So that is the first part, this highway to hell that they're now on. The second part, he becomes aware of these traps and these snares which are on the road. And so as I looked after them, I noticed now one of the boys fall and then another, they fell to the ground and instantly they were somehow dragged by an unseen force towards a frightful drop as he describes it. Describes it. it was distantly visible and it sloped down into a furnace. So what was making these bo boys fall? I asked my companion. And what came to mind was this scripture from Psalms. They have spread cords for a net. By the wayside they have laid snares for me. The guy's guide said, take a closer look. And so I did. And there were just traps everywhere. Some of these traps were right at ground level. Others were at eye level. But they were all very well concealed. And so unaware of the danger, many boys got caught. The ground traps, they appeared fine as spider's webs, hardly even visible. They looked so absolutely flimsy. But to my surprise, every boy who was caught by them, 
he was snared and he fell to the ground. But they are just such flimsy fi fibers, I said to my guide. A mere nothing, the guide said. Just plain human respect. So how many of us get dragged down because of human respect? And I asked them, why do so many get caught? Who pulls them down? Go nearer and have a look, he told me. So I picked one of the traps up and he started looking at the trap carefully to see how it worked. He tugged on the trap and immediately he felt some resistance. And the harder I pulled, the more it was drawing me towards something. Not the other way around. He was being drawn towards something. He was being pulled down by something. So he didn't resist. And he soon found himself at the mouth of a frightful and awful cave. I was unwilling to enter. So I halted and I still continued pulling the thread towards me. And it gave a little, but only after extreme, after great effort. And so I kept tugging. And after a long while, a huge, a hideous monster now emerged. And he was clutching his, in his hands a rope. It was tied to all of these traps. He was the one who was instantly dragging every, anyone who fell to the ground who caught them. It would not do to match his strength, St. John Bosco realized. And I'd better fight him with the sign of the cross and with short invocations. The guide said, now you know who he is. I said, yes, I surely do. It is the devil himself was behind the, these invisible threads that led to all the traps. And so carefully examining now many of the traps, I saw that each of them had an inscription, something written on the trap. Some of them said pride, others said a disobedience, envy, the sixth commandment, theft, gluttony, sloth. And so now he stepped back to observe which of the traps caught the greater number of boys which was the most dangerous trap. And they were the ones which were called by impurity, disobedience, and pride. And he tells us that these three were somehow linked together, somehow like an unholy trinity. So in order to deal with any one of the, those, you have to deal with all three. But many of the other traps also did great harm. So, of course, ours is a God of hope. He's not just going to let people be dragged down to hell and provide no solution. So looking even more closely, I spotted that there were these knives standing up among the traps. A providential hand had put these knives there for cutting oneself free. So what are these knives? They're not all the same size as we'll see. The bigger ones symbolized meditation. The best way of cutting oneself free against the, tra the trap of pride. And the other, other knives, they were not quite as big, symbolized spiritual reading, which has been well made, also helps us to break th free of these things. And there were two swords, not just knives, these are swords representing devotion to the Blessed Sacrament and also devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary, our two greatest aids in breaking free. And then he saw also a hammer, which symbolized confession. But there were also many other knives signifying things like devotion to St. Joseph, devotion to St. Aloysius, and to the other saints. So all of these things help us. But some of them are bigger knives, some are swords. And he says that by these means, quite a few boys were able to free themselves or even to evade capture. When the guide was now satisfied that he had learned everything, they continued walking down this road. It was still a rose-hedged road. But the further they went, the scarcer the roses became. And as they continued walking, the roses became more and more with the longer thorns, became more and more hellish. And so you can see how it starts off beautiful, but slowly, slowly it changes and people are dragged down on this road to hell. 
So we're going to end the talk there. In fact, this talk leads into two of the previous ones, which you will see on the end screen that you can click on those. And this is when he actually gets to hell and what hell is like. A reminder, do join us in this great saints apostolate. Do enroll your mass prayer intentions. So we bring you the, your intentions to this mass. Um, for anyone wanting to be a spiritual child of Padre Pio, this is a requirement to offer your intentions for Padre Pio's intentions. So we do this at the Mass, and this is uh, by a priest of the Immaculata, not far from the Holy House of Loreto. Just go to our website and register your intentions there. And we do thank you for watching, and do join us next time.